Has any of you ever felt like something's just out of place at the Cockatrice Inn? Other than the lady who moans when you interact with her, that is. Well, if you have, you're not alone in this. Ever since the release of Blood and Wine many years ago, there's been a lingering question on my mind. And after I started making my details missed videos about this expansion, people keep bringing the topic back up. And so I finally decided to address it. In short, it's about the woman who shows up right here, and more specifically, the fact that Milton claims she's the innkeeper's daughter. Who was that woman who just left? Didn't see her before, didn't notice her walk in either. Doubtless Linnis, the innkeeper's daughter. But hold, Geralt. However, as we all know, she turns out to be a Bruxa, one of the many actually who are loyal to Detlaf. So the question is, how is this possible? How can Linnis be the innkeeper's daughter and the Bruxa at the same time? The people who comment about this or send me messages normally propose one of two possible explanations. So in this video I'd like to address them quickly and actually propose a third one which I find to be even more plausible. But before we begin, we have to acknowledge the fact that Milton could simply be wrong. He claims that this is the innkeeper's daughter without a doubt, but we have no way of knowing for sure. We do not have any dialogue options about her when talking to the innkeep, neither before nor after realizing what she truly is. Not likely to taste your famous fisherman's chowder, so maybe we could play some Gwent. But I'm willing to assume that there is more to this situation than a simple case of confusion. Okay, enough lollygagging, let's get to the hypotheses proposed by my viewers. The first one is that the innkeeper's daughter was turned into a vampire, more specifically a Bruxa, and that her father and everyone else is simply unaware of that. Now, on the surface, that's a wonderful explanation. We see that even Geralt himself cannot immediately identify her, and so she'll have no trouble concealing herself from the locals. However, we have a major problem here. As far as I remember, Regis confirms in the Witcher books that you cannot make vampires out of humans, let alone Bruxae specifically. Additionally, we have a ton of vampire-related stuff in Blood and Wine, and again, to my knowledge, we have no cases of humans being turned into vampires. So based on that, I think we can safely conclude that this explanation is just not true. There is, however, something that I'd like to show you, which may suggest that there is something out of place with the innkeeper's daughter. I mean, it's not much, but I think other than Milton's dialogue, this is the only other mention of her in the entire game. And it's a notice, which is somewhat hidden beneath the others, you have to take all of them and then look again, that is of course on the cockatrice's board, and it's written by Linka, the innkeeper's daughter. Now the name sounds a little peculiar. She was called Linus before, and while Linka could be a way of calling someone whose name is Linus, it does not really fit the naming conventions into Sun. It's more of a Northern Realms sounding name. Linka sounds a bit like Yanka and Marilka and so on, who are once again from the Northern Realms. Now the note itself warns the visitors of the inn against going out in the nearby forest, which is indeed inhabited by dangerous things, but the second paragraph is written in a way that makes me think she only cares about the inn and not actually about the people's lives. And we know very well that, other than rages, vampires don't really care about human lives at all. So there is that. It's not much, but keep it in mind, I suppose. Now the second proposition, coming from my viewers, is that the father, you know, the innkeep, is also a vampire. First, however, let me address the fact that we don't really know how vampires reproduce. We know that they can have sex, you know, Regis is doing things with the succubus in the books, dead love with Sienna and so on, but we don't exactly know whether that can result in children, and if so, what are the rules and limitations. On top of that, we know that Bruxae are female only. So how does that even work? Perhaps they give birth to others like them? after mating with a male from another vampire species? You know, like higher vampires or catacans or something? What on earth's a catacan? A higher vampire. We don't really know. But with all that said, 
the innkeep being a vampire doesn't necessarily require him to be the Brooks's actual father. They could simply be role-playing, which solves all the reproductive uncertainties. However, the question now becomes, do we really have any other reason to believe that the innkeep is also a vampire? Well, let me show you a couple of things. First, there are some kind of tattoos on his arms. I can't really tell if they mean anything, they could just be generic tattoos. Now, initially, I thought that this one reminds me of the sign the Unseen Elder carries on his necklace. It's a little similar, I guess, but it's certainly not as similar as this one, which is basically the exact same sign. And, if you haven't seen it, guess where that is? Well, it's fairly close to the Cockatrice Inn. Now that is interesting. We can actually see these signs at several locations in Toussaint. There is one at the Unseen's Cave, there is one at Tesha Mutna, another higher vampire stronghold, um, I believe there's one at Oriana's place, and of course there's this one at the Cockatrice. Now does that mean that the owner of the inn is a higher vampire or something? Well, not necessarily, but I certainly think it could mean something big. Right, and finally, I would like to propose a third hypothesis, and that is that the Bruxa has managed to convince the innkeep that she is in fact his daughter. I think there is good evidence of such possibility in the books, as well as a little bit in the third game. So, in the first book, ironically called The Last Wish, in what is possibly my favorite story, there is a Bruxa called Verena. She is actually mentioned in Skellige's Most Wanted. So what? What about Verena? The Bruxa with the fondness for blue roses from Nazaire. He showed her no mercy. <laughs> Verena killed many an innocent. I had to do something, but I've helped monsters aplenty. So in that story, we learn a bit more about their kind, and specifically that they are capable of some form of... mind control, let's call it. In fact, we don't actually know how the final result looks like. Um, the process of achieving it is rather lengthy and happens over time. Specifically in the book, she was subjecting Nivellen to it. However, Geralt managed to kill her before Nivellen had fully succumbed to her influence. So to explain how it works, well, it appears that through songs and other techniques, the Bruxa is able to influence the mind of the victim and over time they grow more and more susceptible, they start having nightmares and visions and whatnot. In fact, it's kind of like the indoctrination in Mass Effect. Reaper indoctrination is an insidious means of corrupting organic minds, reprogramming the brain through physical and psychological conditioning using electromagnetic fields, infrasonic and ultrasonic noise, and other subliminal methods. The Reaper's resulting control over the limbic system leaves the victim highly susceptible to its suggestions. Organics undergoing indoctrination may complain of headaches and buzzing or ringing in their ears. As time passes, they have feelings of being watched and hallucinations of ghostly presences. Indoctrination can create perfect deep cover agents. A Reaper's suggestions can manipulate victims into betraying friends, trusting enemies, or viewing the Reaper itself with superstitious awe. So it could be that Linka is manipulating the innkeep in the same way, only difference is that Linka has actually succeeded. I also mentioned some evidence from the third game, and we do have it in the form of the lesbian Bruxa. If you remember from my Details Mist series, a few episodes ago there was this man whose wife is being unfaithful. She has started growing weaker and acting weird and sleepwalking or, or talking in her sleep or something. And in the end, it turned out that her lover was a Bruxa. And so the changes in the wife's behavior were likely the result of a similar manipulation once again. So, after a lot of speculation, I think that's all I had. Those were the three possible explanations I wanted to go over. And um, this is definitely one of those things where I feel there's more to be discovered that I simply don't know yet. So if any of you do, please share it with us down in the comments. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like. And if not, well, I still thank you for watching. Also, special thanks to my YouTube members, as well as my supporters on Patreon. And as always, until the next video, stay tuned and be good.
Let me guess. She's got a dragon. 